Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel Oracle DB online training. In this session, we are going to look how to install Oracle Rack 21C on uh, Linux, Oracle Linux 8.4. So at the beginning, I'll be guiding you how to uh, install Oracle uh, Linux 8.4. And uh, so Oracle Linux 8.4 installation, we are going to cover first. And after that, we will be doing uh, Rack configuration uh, 21C, okay? So let's uh, start today's session. But before we begin, I'll request all the new friends to please subscribe my YouTube channel, uh, Oracle DB Online Training. On this uh, YouTube platform, you are already getting a lot of learning like Previously, we have covered how to uh, install 21C and uh, uh, there are a lot of videos uh, available on this YouTube platform. You can learn how uh, Golden Gate uh, Data Guard, even though uh, rack installation, OEM configuration, database upgrade um, and uh, so many performance related steps. Okay, so before we begin, I'll request all the new friends, please subscribe and let's uh, start today's session that is uh, configuration of 21C rack database setup on Oracle Linux 8.4. So first i'll uh, i'll start with a configuration from here so for this i'll use uh, oracle 21c underscore node one okay so okay so let's uh, assume this is my location where i want to keep all the files so from here i'll move further this is my linux setup and oracle linux 64 bit and here i'll select the ram around uh, uh, 10 gb so that it will be uh, better to use so uh, once this is selected, then I have to go with the create virtual hard disk now option and within this we'll select the VHD virtual hard disk. Okay. And after that, I'll go with the dynamically allocated uh, size so that we, in future, if it is required, we can at least uh, resize the virtual hard disk. And then we have to basically provide the uh, size for this machine. I'll select somewhere around 100 GB. Okay, so once this is done, then I'll move further um, by creating this virtual machine. And after that, we have to make certain changes in the uh, configuration so that uh, we can use it uh, efficiently. So here we have to select a bi-directional option here and go to the description. After that, we have to basically uh, make sure the processor are uh, sufficient to process the configuration and uh, within the display you just select the enable 3d uh, acceleration and then in the storage uh, we can select the um, software where we want to i mean we are going to use oracle linux 8.4 this is my uh, i'll just go to the installer file where uh, i kept file okay so here i'll select the 21 uh, 21 oracle linux 21c so once i select this file and after this, we have we have to basically select the network also. So we are going to use two separate networks, which is basically used for the public net as well as uh, uh, one will be used for the private net. Okay, so two internal networks we have selected. So second one will be my private net, and the third adapter is going to be used for the bridge bridge adapter. Okay, once all these are selected, then after that we can share one of the directory where I am going to keep all my files. Uh, for the later users 21c uh, drive where I, my files will be so i'll just select this folder okay and i'll click on the auto mount option here and then i'll click ok and once this is done then i'll start the installation of uh, oracle linux 8.4 version so we have to click on the start button once we'll click start button our installation will begin and the first interface will appear like this so we have to select the install oracle linux 8.4 so as soon as this installation begin, we'll uh, get the interface. Uh, so now it is initializing. So guys, uh, initially we are learning how to um, perform the Oracle Linux 8.4 installation. And once that is completed, then we can go ahead with a uh, 21C rack configuration. So. Uh, this this entire journey will be a very uh, step by step guide for any new beginner who wants to learn uh, how to perform the oracle 21c rack configuration on oracle linux 8.4 that's why i'm covering from the basic to uh, i mean uh, last uh, last mile so um please uh, make sure you are subscribed my youtube channel if you are uh, new on my youtube so 
even though you can learn a lot of uh, stuff previously we have covered. So now we got the interface of uh, uh, Oracle Linux 8.4 installation. So by default, the language will be English. So uh, we have to choose this. So once the language is selected, then we can uh, look for the installation summary. So within this in installation summary, basically we have to go with the installation uh, software selection. So uh, server with GUI option is uh, we have to select. And uh, even though in the installation source, we have to basically, uh, it will be our local media, uh, but the installation destination, we have to uh, make a separate mount points. So I'll, I'll show how, what all the things that we need to select. Okay. So within software selection, we have to go with a server with GUI option. And in this, uh, uh, on the right side, we have to select uh, all the additional uh, software related to server with GUI option. Once this is done, we have to click on the done button. Then we have to go with the installation destination, click on the installation destination and uh, a window will appear like this. And within this, we have to go with the custom option. So we'll select the custom option here so once uh, you selected custom click on the done button so window will appear like this in this we have to click on the plus icon so once you click on the plus you have to basically first select the boot mount point which will be uh, around 1024 m so this is going to be my boot mount point after this we have to again uh, go with this plus icon and uh, select another mount point. This is my going to be my slash mount point, which is having all the software uh, or the root, or you, you can say the Linux software installation will uh, happen on this mount point. So make this mount point around uh, uh, 20 GB. Okay, so once this is done, then click uh, add. And again, we have to go with plus uh, icon selection so that we can create another mount point. Okay, so in this, uh, we have to basically create swap mount point. Swap has to be uh, similar to your RAM. So now I'll try to make it uh, 10 GB. After that, click OK. And uh, next, we have to select another mount point, which is we are going to use for, uh, now we'll create U01 mount point, which will be used for um, Oracle's, uh, or you can say grid uh, binaries. So I'll make this as a 30 GB. Okay, and click on the add. Same way we have to do for U02 mount point creation that is going to be used for the RDBMS software installation. So this is going to be U02. I'll make it 30 GB. After this, we will be going to select the temp location that is going to be a use a slash TMP. So make it around 8.5 G. So once this is done, click OK. And now we can proceed with a uh, further. So once you click on the done button, then you have to go with accept changes. After this, you can basically modify the date and time also based upon your location. So once this is done, then you can basically click on the done icon and uh, after that we have to go to network and host option in this seg segment we have to basically enable the uh, net network uh, configuration so i'll enable the third adapter that uh, third ethernet card that we have uh, basically used for bridge adapter purpose and even though we'll modify the host name, so we are going to use the host name as a rack one. This is going to be my first node. So once this is done, then we'll click on the done icon.
okay after this we have to basically set the root password so once the root password is selected then we will proceed with the user creation also so you can create any test user or any specific user you want once this is done then you can basically go ahead with begin installation click on the begin installation this is going to take a bit of time once the uh, installation is finished uh, then you can proceed with the uh, rack configuration so there will be some prerequisite that i'm going to cover once the installation is finished so for a uh, uh, time being when uh, when this installation is going on i'll be uh, making this video on pause once the installation is finished then i'll so all the further steps so i hope you are understanding how to how to perform the oracle linux 8.4 installation okay so if you have any queries so far you can mention in the comment box i'll definitely try to help so now uh, we have completed the installation so we as a next step we have to click on the reboot okay once we click on the reboot the system will get restarted and uh, after that we have to basically finish the uh, installation so this is going to take a, a small amount of time i mean uh, you can see that oracle linux server 8 is uh, configured on my system okay so uh, now we can see the screen of oracle linux on my screen this is uh, uh, looking very nice so our oracle linux 8.4 is basically getting uh, uh, started with the initial configuration so now i'm going to select uh, uh, this one license and information within that we have to go with uh, accepting the uh, license and agreement and click on the done icon and then we are just finished with the this installation click on the finish configuration okay so once you click on finish configuration part then the next page will be a, a login page so here we can log in with the root users by providing the root password and finally we get the uh, interface like this so on this we have to uh, select a few tabs like next click on the next again click on next and then click on skip and you are done so the next part that we are now going to do is uh, do some uh, kernel related parameter uh, installation so for that i am going to log in with to my server so uh, first i'll log in into the server then we can uh, do some changes into this okay so this is my server ip you can uh, look into the server details on the network uh, settings under the virtual box machine so now i'm going to log in with the root users okay so once i'll click uh, i'll just log in with the root user now i'll clear my screen from here and uh, you can look for uh, catch etc red hat release so you can see that it is a uh, uh, red hat enterprise linux 8.4 but it is basically a oracle linux version so uh, that is one thing and apart from that you can verify the mount points that we have created it is you can see u01 and u02 and around the 14 gb available space on slash mount points and even though you can look for the uh, swap uh, and memory details okay after this we will what we are going to do is uh, first we have to install some packages related to um, kernel so that you can uh, go into the settings of virtual box uh, how i mean uh, insert guest edition cd will work otherwise there there is some error comes up okay so in in order to do that we have to use the dnf command okay dnf command basically it is uh, it is uh, similar to your yam install con, uh, commands okay now i'm going to execute this command from 
so basically this its job is to install the kernel devil packages so once this is done then we can uh, go for the virtual box uh, set i mean guests addition cd insert so that it will install uh, i mean it will make our interface better now you can see this uh, package is getting installed okay this very important package for virtual box to work uh, smoothly okay so uh, this is the first thing that we need to do once the oracle linux 8.4 is got installed on uh, your virtual box system after this you have to basically install the uh, this one also came out a red hack sorry uh, oracle asm So guys, now the two packages is successfully installed. I mentioned here on the highlighted comments. Okay, so you can look, these two packages are very important once your uh, Oracle Linux is installed. After that, we have to basically uh, go and uh, uh, install this, uh, insert the guest edition CD. Okay, okay. so we are getting this error because uh, we have previously, uh, so I'll remove this disk and uh, then after that we'll, we have to again, I reinsert this uh, this one virtual door. So after that, click on the insert guest edition CD. Okay, I'm getting it this error. So click on the run icon here. So it will take a bit of time. From either here also, we can go to, into the settings. So now I'll set the display. So I'll just uh, increase the font here by selecting these options. So click on this option. After that, we can basically uh, proceed further. So after doing this, we can now proceed further with the uh, actual uh, configuration of a two node rack setup. So I'll go back to my original documents. So basically there are two nodes that I'm going to use. First will be my rack DB and the uh, rack DB one and second one will be rack DB two. Okay, and these are going to be my two IPs and this is a shared storage and the two node setup uh, we are going to make as a 21C. So the next part that we are uh, now going to do is uh, basically do some uh, prerequisites. So for Oracle uh, Linux, uh, for Oracle 21C, we have to basically use this uh, predefined package that is uh, Oracle database pre-installed 21C. So I'll, I'm going to install it on the first node and as a part of this installation package, it will install all the necessary package which is going to require for a 21C configuration. As you can see, this is uh, installing the mm, KSH compact and uh, some other packages along with this. The, it is going to create our Oracle user also with the O-install as a primary group, okay. And once this is done, then we can basically verify what is my current uh, um, uh, kernel parameter. So all the kernel parameters are basically uh, uh, get, gets uh, set up uh, as a part of this uh, pre-installation package. So after that, we have to basically create the group also, uh, required groups you can create. Uh, there are a few groups which is already a part of uh, this installation. So <clears throat> looking at my original documentation, so all these steps we are going to do basically so oracle linux 8.4 we have already configured and after that uh, we need to basically uh, create two separate nodes so we are going to create all the changes on the first node and later we are going to clone it so these all the things already done 21c software install uh, download we i'll provide you the links you can go through the links uh, in the description box okay and you can uh, download this software once our um, system is ready then we can transfer it on the server also and these are the basically minimum requirement of uh, um, RAM uh, for uh, this configuration. And uh, for the ASM configuration, we are going to use 30 GB, which I'm going to show you later how to do configure ASM on for any RAG database configuration. So as a part of system prerequisite, I'm going to perform these operations. So within this, we have already created the user and groups. And after that, uh, we have to create a grid user also. So I'll, I'm going to create the grid users. And uh, let me just uh, show you whether the Oracle user exists or not. So uh, Oracle user is already created. So now I'm going to create the grid user also. Uh, after this, uh, if the, if you want, you can modify the uh, users and groups also based upon your requirements. And then we'll 
uh, set the password for Oracle users also. So now I'm setting to password for Oracle users. Once this is done, then same thing we have to do for the grid user also. So now I'm setting the grid password. So this is done after this, we have to basically make an entry in the etc security dots limit file. Uh, basically it will provide the limits on the uh, user uh, specific limits. Okay, from the root users, we are going to insert these uh, inputs in the files. Okay, so let's uh, copy the uh, content from here and uh, I'm going to make the entry in the limits.conf file. So <clears throat> now we have copied the file here and you can cross verify by running the cat command okay so for both user oracle as well as a, a grid user as a part of pre-installation prerequisite, we have inserted all these values as soft and hard limits and after that we have to uh, make a, a directory structure that is we are going to use so user one mount point basically uh, it, it will contain my grid uh, softwares and user two will be used for the db home configuration if you have any uh, patches so in our case there is no patch we can uh, remove this part this is not required okay so i'm um, now i'm going to create all the directory structure and respectively i'm going to allocate the uh, permissions also for u01 grid grid ownership u02 for the oracle ownership okay so once this is done i'll just paste it uh, these values and after that after doing this, we have to uh, configure the batch profile for the respective users. For grid users, I'm going to set this batch profile. So I'll log into the grid users. And here I'm going to set the bass underscore profile. So it will contain all this uh, information. Okay. So let's uh, paste these values. And the second part that I'm going to do, I'll just paste all these values for the Oracle users also in the bash profile. So I'll log in with the Oracle users and uh, I'll make an entry of these uh, in the in the bash profile. Okay. So <clears throat> this is very good practice to follow because uh, bash profile it will hold all the uh, location information. So whenever you are, I mean, you can test it also like this. I'm going to show you how to reload. And uh, if you run the Oracle underscore home location, it will directly uh, point you to the actual location of Oracle home. Okay. So uh, now these uh, configuration are done. And the next thing that we need to do is we have to make an entry in the etc host file from the root users. So I'm going to run the cat command for etc host. So verify what is the current detail. So currently it is just pointing out the uh, details about the local host so now i'm going to uh, make a network entry so basically a network entry uh, will be uh, for both the both side of an uh, entry so you can look for like private ips we are going to use uh, one private ip for interface for um, rack one and similarly for the rack two if you have three nodes then you have to make a three entries for these um, private ips public ips and <clears throat> vips okay and scan will remain uh three number of scan ips okay so now i'm going to insert all these values in etc host file and uh, accordingly we have to modify the network file also so i'm going to use uh, now i'm going to uh, actual interface of my server so from here i'll i'll go to the network tab over here and i'll modify the network settings by clicking on the wired settings so under this we have the two interface which is currently a down state so i'll modify these two and going to uh, click on connect automatically and under the ipv4 i click on the manual so here we have to make an entry like 168.56.71 i think yeah let me verify with my file what all the files are. so public ips are basically uh, 71 and 72 so on the node one i'm going to use 71 so this is uh, value 255.255.255.0 255 and after that 0 .0, .0, 0 and click on apply and you can just uh, disable and enable this interface similarly we have to set for the private type is also click on the manual entry and go to 190 uh, i mean make the entry in the ip addresses okay so here we are going to use uh, 0.1 no it's not 0 0.1 let me just re-verify i think it is 10.1 okay so it should be a 10.1 series so remember guys uh, for uh, public interface uh, and uh, private interface uh, your address has to be different otherwise uh, you are going to face uh, some issues okay 
so uh, your public ip interface basically uh, you have to use the same segment for your virtual virtual ips as well as scan ips so once these entries are done then we can basically disable and re enable it okay so that means our network uh, related uh, changes are done so after this we have to uh, basically move further and disable the firewall so i'm going to use this command to disable the firewall so come back to my original prompt so from here i'll just disable the uh, so after this we have to next move further and uh, make sure the our uh, uh, crony uh, d is running uh, services are enabled and restarted so that your uh, uh, time zone uh, i mean network time is taken care after this we will basically stop the first node and uh, we are going to make a clone of it okay so i'm stopping this uh, machine right away and i'll make a duplicate uh, cloning of this uh, machine uh, by i'll just log in into the I'm going to copy this name and uh, click on the right click and click on clone on the same path. I'm going to uh, place this file where I'm my uh, Oracle 21C node one is there. OK, so now the naming convention I'm going to use as a node two, and uh, within this. So I selected this path and uh, here I need to select uh, generate the new Mac address and click on the next. So here we have to do the full cloning. OK. So once you click on full cloning, it will basically uh, take a, a few minutes of time, depend upon your system. So uh, it will basically uh, make a duplicate copy of your uh, existing uh, virtual machine that you have selected for the cloning. OK, so once the cloning is over, then we can uh, proceed with a, uh, further configuration. So as for our documentation, uh, we have completed system uh, prerequisites uh, for the node one. And even though we have uh, done all these uh, changes and we have set the network setting also. And uh, then we have uh, stopped the firewall and configure and NTP here configuration. And now we are doing the cloning. OK, so now basically we are doing bringing down the node one and doing the cloning. So once this is done, then I'll start the second node and modify the uh, host name Oracle SIDs in the BAS profile, the network settings and all those things. OK. Then we are going to uh, create a shared storage. So now we can see uh, this is almost about to finish. Let's uh, wait for another uh, minutes. And then once this is done, then we can move further. So now you can see both uh, my uh, Oracle 21C node one and node two, uh, both are ready. So I'll start node second node okay and uh, we'll basically modify the host name and other details once our uh, system is started so you can see that uh, it is getting started i hope you are understanding how the um, how the steps are actually i'm covering everything in details maybe this video is going to be a little longer than you are expecting uh, uh, sorry for that but uh, uh, this is uh, very helpful i think and if you're liking this video please click on the like button and uh, if you are new on my youtube channel please subscribe that is going to help me okay um even though you can explore a lot of uh, videos on my YouTube channels. So please uh, uh, go through the playlist. Uh, you will uh, get all the uh, different videos uh, based upon uh, your requirements. Okay. So guys, our second node is now ready. We can just click on the uh, uh, login page and click on root user. So once this is done, So once you log in and then after that, basically we have to modify the network setting first, and then we have to modify the host name and then batch profile. So what I'll do, I'll just go to the networks tab over here and click on the wired setting. So you can basically modify the display also before doing anything. If you're feeling that this is not a good interface to look into. So just click on this options, click on apply to the changes after that you have to basically go back to your network setting over here within the network setting you are going to get uh, um, ethernet details from from here you just modify the ip since our second node is going to be 170 
so i'll modify it accordingly this is basically a bridge adapter that we have used uh, during the initial configuration if you haven't seen that part just uh, uh, revisit that part in the initial phases okay and from here we have to basically uh, modify the ip so this is my public ip and this is our second node so i'll modify it according to uh, 72 okay so after this click on apply and same way we have to stop and start uh, again for the uh, private type is also we have to modify as a 10.2 and here we'll uh, provide the gateway also if you don't provide that's okay that's not a big deal so just click stop start and after that we are going to uh, take a session from uh, mobile xterm or any putty if you are using it okay so from here i'll log into 170 server and just uh, have to provide the root uh, user login and password so once you provide the username password, you can just uh, click on. Uh, so currently you can see the host name as rack one because we haven't modified. So we have to modify by using the NMCLI command. So here we are going to modify the host name to the rack local domain two. So I'll click on, uh, I'll just copy these commands and paste it out. So if you run the host command now, so you can look as a host name as a rack two, you can directly duplicate this uh, uh, server. So click here okay now you can see the rack 2 is visible to you okay just uh, clear these screens and uh, uh, now you can basically go uh, into the system and uh, start the first node also and then there will be no conflict but before we go, uh, go further i'll just log in with our uh, oracle user so uh, within this i'm going to modify the bash profile okay so here we have to uh, make the profile as rack 2 it should be rack db2 not rack one so this is done and similarly we have to modify for grade user also i'll log in with a grade user and modify the profile okay so here we have to use asm2 instead of asm1 okay So now I can stop this machine and uh, after that we have to make a ASM storage and that's a very next step that we are going to use. So for that I'll just uh, I mean, I'll go to the virtual media manager under the file. Here we have to uh, click on create. So we have to make a fixed uh, size uh, ASM. Okay. okay, click on the fixed size and click on next. And here we need to basically provide the virtual uh, disk name so you can provide any names like uh, 21c asm 01 so this is going to be used for my ocr and i'll make it somewhere around 10 gb so click on create so this will uh, take a bit of time depend upon your system and uh, same way we have to create another uh, disk that is going to be used for uh, data disk group and uh, and one more we we are going to use for the archive location or fra okay so as a testing environment we are keeping this size very small maybe in real life production scenarios this size is going to be in uh, tbs or gbs okay so once uh, uh, this uh, disk basically are get created after that uh, we have to make it shareable uh, currently these uh, this uh, disks basically going to be a, a normal disk so if you uh, click on this part you have to basically make it shareable and click on apply the uh, same way we have to uh, create another disk and uh, uh, modify the names accordingly so make sure you select it as a fixed size otherwise you are going to face some issues okay so now i'll take the naming convention as asm2 and click on save and here we are going to uh, take the size around 12 gb for data disk groups click on so not i'll just take it some bigger size or maybe later we are going to face some issues okay so now all three disks are uh, created so i'll make it shareable okay so once you click on this uh, disk you can see the shareable option here that means we can share across the two nodes so now we have to go to the setting of the each machines and uh, uh, make the uh, new storage available. So click on the plus icon here and select all the uh, newly allocated uh, devices across your both the systems. Okay, just uh, choose one by one. 
and after this same thing you have to do for the second node also now you can see uh, these three devices are available with node one and the same thing we have to do is for the node two also go to the storage click on the plus icon here you have to select one by one okay so lastly we have to select the third one also click on okay so you can see all the shareable devices are available here as well as on the this device so after this we have to just start the machines one by one or you can just uh, start it in parallelly once the system is started then you can just log in into the system from the mobile xtom or you need put put if you are using it so i hope you are understanding how the uh, basically steps are going uh, getting performed and how to how we are configuring the two nodes or uh, rack setups on the virtual box machine if you want to learn how to perform the oracle 19c installation i have cre created a, a video on that uh, that was a very uh, a same way of uh, doing the installation so please uh, go through that video as well if you have any confusion you can write it uh, send me an email you can get my email on the description box okay so meanwhile the systems are getting started after this that we have to basically go through some uh, so basically we have uh, performed the uh, disk allocation uh, at the virtual virtual box level and after that we need to create a asm disk okay so we are going to use a asm uh, lib for performing that part for which we have already installed the oracle asm uh, binaries at the beginning of uh, this session okay so let me just uh, go back to my prompt again and from here i'll log in to both the servers one by one they're still getting started i think it will take a bit of time so now both the systems are started successfully okay after this we can just uh, go back to the mobile xtom uh window and here you can see rack 1 and rack 2 okay so now i'll go back to my uh configuration page also for from the notepad we can just uh, look for ftisk hyphen l command okay so it will list out the newly allocated uh, devices so sorry ftisk hyphen l so you can look for uh, 10gb 12gb and as well as a uh, mm, so all three devices are basically uh, you can see on the screen so one is 15 gb one is 12 gb and one is 10 gb that is uh, so now we have to uh, i mean uh, create new partitions based upon on this devices okay so i'm going to use a new command for n then after that we have to just click on next 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 click on the w for saving this changes and same way we have to do for other devices also so once this is done then you have to do for remaining devices also so save these changes then run the f disk f disk hyphen l command so it will basically provide you the newly created partition so you can see that sdb1 sdd1 and sdc1 okay so once this is over then after that uh, you can basically uh, use oracle asm based command to uh, create new disks okay so so before we do anything we have to run the oracle asm config command on both the nodes okay just minute. i think this package is missing let me just verify so in order to resolve the issue of oracle asm you can directly install this package uh, i think this is related to 7 version uh that's okay we can just uh, uh no dependency based we have installed it okay so once the oracle asm support package is installed on your oracle linux 8.4 since uh, 8.4 based uh, package is not available for oracle uh, asm support so we have installed the seven version uh, uh based kernel oracle asm okay uh so once this is done you can run the oracle asm command it will work without any issue so you can look that all these commands are coming up so same package we have to install on the second node also before we proceed further so i'll go to the 
uh, media location where my softwares are kept okay so on this path if you look you can find out these two packages like oracle asm support as well as oracle asm lib so uh, it has to be installed on the system before we begin further so once this is installed then you can basically execute the oracle asm command on the 8.4 version also okay so this is done now on both the system oracle asm is done after that we have to basically proceed further with the actual configuration step that we are performing previously so we have to run oracle asm configure hyphen i commands so that it will configure the system so here we have to uh, provide the user as a owner of uh, this oracle asm will be grade user and o install will be my default group it has to start it at uh, boot so this part is done after that same thing we have to do on the second node also so as a part of initial configuration you have to follow the same thing on across both the nodes okay so once this is done then you have to basically initialize the oracle asm so run the oracle asm and uh, init command so it will basically start the configuration uh it will basically load the packages binaries okay so modules are loaded now we have to make a three different disks so first disk will be used for uh, i mean if you are not sure uh, which disk to use so just uh, run f disk hyphen l command to verify the space used okay so i'll run the f disk command so here you can see the sdb1 okay sdb1 is around 10 gbs that is uh, we are going to use for the our data disk group and then sdc1 is basically 15 gb that we are going to use for data and sdb1 is used for the ocr and the third one we are going to use for the uh, archive location okay so based upon that we are going to create three different disk which we are going to use later for a so here you can provide the name as ocr and dev slash stb1 sorry we have to run this command on the first so okay, so we are going to use asm based uh, naming convention that's okay we are uh, we can modify it later also so here we have the second device as a uh, asm2 that is going to use for our data disk groups and the third one will be using for the archive location okay so these three disks are available now we are going to run the oracle asm scan command to verify the changes okay so run the list disk command so it will list out all the newly created disks so we have to do the same thing on the second node also so for that run the oracle asm init command after that you can run the scan command okay and then list disk we have to run the list disk command so it will list out all the three disks that means our asm is ready for uh, installation okay so uh, once the uh, disks are available in the asm format then we can use it later also so the next part that we are going to do on the primary as well as uh, i mean on the the setups we have to configure a uh, passwordless ssh okay so you can do passwordless ssh configuration manually also or you can use the user setup.sh file which reside inside the uh, d install location so for that we have to basically transfer the software okay so if i'll run the ls and lrt commands we have already downloaded the um, grid at home for 21c as well as a database home uh, so i'll transfer this file on the first node on uh, u01 mount point where um, i'm going to and configure the uh, so u01 is basically my uh, use for uh, keeping the software of 21c grid home okay so on this path i'm going to copy uh, this file which we have selected i mean uh, the grid zip file and uh, so since we are copying it from the root users later we have to modify the permissions also for this uh, devices okay same way we have to copy the db home on the u02 uh, location that is going to be my db home location okay i hope you are understanding how these uh, um, uh, things are happening if you have any quer queries so far you can mention uh, in the comment and uh, you can even the send me an email also i'll definitely try to help okay
once the software is getting copied then after that uh, we have to basically unzip this software from the respective uh, user by going to the oracle home locations and uh, before that we have to basically make a passwordless ssh between the two nodes uh, and we are going to create passwordless for a grid as well as oracle homes and these are the two nodes that is going to involve in this process so based upon that we are uh, doing all these changes okay now you can see the softwares are copied now i'll modify the permissions okay so i just modify the permissions uh, based upon this uh, locations after that i'll i'll just uh, log in with our respective users and i try to unzip the softwares okay so from here i'll go to oracle home location so in this location i copied uh, this software so i'll run the unzip and uh, so first unzip the Sorry for the typo mistake. I think uh, that's okay. After this, uh, we uh, this software is getting unzipped. Then uh, uh, we can basically uh, go for the passwordless SSH configuration using the uh, this uh, SSH user setup .ssh file. So as a part, uh, it is mandatory to grid and Oracle user has to be passwordless SSH. You can also configure the root uh, user passwordless SSH. Uh, so these steps you can perform um, by coordinating with your system admin as well, but you can use uh, um, a predefined file also that this SSH SS file, okay, from your deinstall location from the respective Oracle home locations. Okay. So I hope you are understanding how the flow is going on here. So now you can see that uh, these files are unzipped. You can remove this file. This is not required at all for once this is unzipped. Okay. So same way we have to log in into the Oracle users and unzip the uh, Oracle binaries from the RDBMS home location. Okay. I'll, I'll go back to Oracle home and from there I'll try to unzip the softwares. So now we have, un uh, we have on the Oracle home location here, I'll unzip. Okay click on unzip and uh, run these commands. So this will unzip all the software related to RDBMS home. So meanwhile, we can basically uh, check the ping uh, node reachability. So you can see that from first node, we are able to ping on the second node. Similarly, uh, for private IPs also, we are able to ping and same thing we can verify on the second node also. We can try to ping on the first node and this is also ha happening. That means uh, this uh, node reachability is successfully done. And uh, once uh, your unzip of uh, files are done, then uh, we can proceed with a password SSH configuration. So from the uh, grid user, I'll, I'll go to this path. Okay. So we'll go to the... So here, if you run the LSF and LRT command, you can see the SSH user password list setup. The option is there. So using this command, SSH user grid. So now we are trying to uh, create passwordless SSH between the two nodes, rack one and rack two that we have. Okay. So now it will ask the password for grid users. So we have to provide the input. So for both nodes, it will ask the password. Okay, so with this uh, passwordless configuration between the two nodes, rack one and rack two will be uh, completed. And we can verify that also by uh, logging to, by doing the SSH between the two nodes. Okay. So from here, I'll try to run the SSH to second node. It is happening from reverse view also. We have to verify whether it is working or not. So uh, this is also, working okay that means uh, password less SSH between the rack one rack two is completed for grid users and now we can basically uh, copy this file for root also i mean uh, i'll just uh, from this path we can uh, copy the file from the root users okay so i'll go to this path and i'll try to copy uh, this one on the local location and then I'll try to configure passwordless between the 
uh, root user also this is not mandatory but i'm doing it uh, for uh, maybe later users because sometimes we need to uh, run sss to second node or like that okay so i'm just trying to make a password less between or uh, for root user also just to provide the input for root user password for both the nodes this is done after that we we can basically verify the password SSH between the two nodes so now we can see the password SSH is working between the two nodes for rack uh, root user also okay so same way we have to do for oracle user also i think uh, this time uh, this is uh, unzip is completed now i'll uh, go to the deinstall location okay within that we'll get the file of uh, ssh less uh, password less ssh okay so using this file i'm going to configure password list between the two nodes so let me just uh, click on i mean run the this command so it will create password list for oracle users since we have given the user input as a oracle and host names are rack one rack two okay so provide the input for both the node password if you provide the wrong password it will throw the errors so please make sure provide the right password so sometimes this happen like uh, uh, i mean you are not able to or you are not able to basically um, do the ssh from even though after doing this configuration so sometimes we need to uh, i mean transfer this these files from one node to second node so just uh, copy these uh, public and uh, private keys from first node to the second node so that it will work okay on this path i'll transfer and uh, ssh rack two so now from ssh rack one so both are working that means passwordless ssh configuration is successfully done okay so the next part that we need to do is to start the installation process and i'll just go back to my original documentation so asm part is already done and uh, even though passwordless ssh is also done now we can start the grid installation for 21c so basically now i'm going to take the new session for first node and everything will be basically going to be done from the first node so i'll just log in with the first node and uh, from the grid users so that we can directly uh, go ahead with the installation from here so remember one thing if you are using a mobile xtem you don't have to worry about the display part or otherwise you need to export the display once you run the xos plus command from the root users okay so now we are done with the grid uh, I mean, logged in with the grid users, and after that, we need to basically go to dollar Oracle home. From there, we'll invoke the uh, grid setup dot file that is going that is used for the installation. Okay, so here is our first interface for. Um, uh, I mean, it will provide me an interface for uh, graphical interface for twenty one C rack configuration. I mean, grid infrastructure configuration. So let's uh, see so this is our 21c uh, grid infrastructure configuration uh, page from where we need to do the configuration now uh, we can go ahead with the uh, installation so click on configure oracle grid infrastructure for new cluster and sometime we need to uh, configure oracle restart but now we are doing the rack configuration so we have to go with a new cluster option over here so click on next part here after that uh, we have to click on configure oracle standalone cluster if you have a domain based cluster uh, install configuration you can go with the domain option but we are uh, configuring a standalone cluster that means uh, it will not be part of any domain so we'll uh, go to the next part here we have to provide the cluster name so uh, cluster name by default uh, choose based upon your uh, um, node name so uh, and that is okay and after that we have to provide the scan name scan name basically comes from your etc host file that you have defined there if you run the cat commands for cat etc uh, host from here you can see the scan name so this scan name we have to basically provide here if you want to con configure a gns based configuration then you can select this option and uh, accordingly you can modify by default uh, scan port is 1521 so we'll use that one and it after that we have to add the second node also by clicking add option over here and the public host name and, and the public host name basically we have to provide the second node public host name and the private host name we have to provide the private host name okay sorry virtual host name we have to provide for the second node so 
I'll provide this as input. Okay, once this is done, so this would be VIP. You just click on okay. So after this, we have to uh, click on the next tab. So the next part that we need to select is network. So by default, it is the first interface is used for public and second is used for the private and uh, uh, ASM configuration. So click on the next. So the next part is we have to select the storage configuration. So we are using a flex ASM for the storage as a by default option. So we'll go with that. And if you want to, you can use a GIM and a database also. So we are not using that one. So click on the next. So after this, we have to basically uh, select the external redund uh, redundancy for OCR disk group. So first disk group has to be OCR and you can select the change the discovery path here. So it will be under the dev slash Oracle ASM since we have used uh, ASM lib. Okay. So uh, you can just click on okay. And from here, we can select the first disk that we have allocated around 10 GB. So this is going to be my first uh, ASM after that we click okay. And here we can provide the same password for both user ASM, uh, SNMP as well as a sys user. You can provide whatever the password you want. And after that you click on the next step. So password is basically failed. That means uh, that's okay. Uh, basically I use a small password, but as per the standard, we have to use some strong password. Okay, and uh, next part is failure isolation. So if you have uh, Oracle support uh, failure isolation detail, you can provide here or else you can skip it. And the next part is a selection of uh, OMS server. So if you have any OMS server con configuration, you can provide those details also here. And the, the next part is uh, to select the Oracle ASM administrator group. So here I'll select the default group of O install group that is our primary group. So you can click on the next tab here. So this is giving me a warning that it's okay. After that, we have to uh, move further. That is a selection of Oracle base. So by default, Oracle base uh, location is uh, U01 app grid uh, since we have uh, given the input as in the best profile. So after that, we'll move further. And uh, here we have to our inventory directory and this is our install group. Just click on the next tab. Here we have the two choices, whether you want to execute the uh, root script by manually or automatically. So I'll provide the root password and uh, click on automatically run uh, root uh, script. So I'll just uh, click on the next. So now it is going for a prerequisite checks. So if it is uh, successful, then we can uh, Click on the next. So since we haven't used the DNS based uh, configuration, uh, if you have a DNS based configuration, so those errors can be ignorable. And uh, I think uh, we should wait uh, till all the prerequisites getting verified. Okay. So now we can see there are a few warnings. We can ignore them. Okay. So once we ignore, we can move ahead. Click on uh, ignore and move ahead. So with this, we'll click on the installation. It will uh, start the installation. Parallelly, we can monitor the session also, like uh, what is happening in the um, backends. So Now you can see that almost 60% uh, is uh, data has been copied in the backend. Okay. 
So uh, parallelly, we can see this progress is happening. The first node configuration is completed. Second node is getting transferred. So now we'll click on the yes option to execute the root scripts. So now we can see that uh, it is completed. Uh, the installation of grid is completed, but there is uh, some failure like a, a post installation failure is there. It is due to happening due to uh, we don't have any DNS configuration because of that it got failed. So we can ignore it safely. That's not a problem. You can just click on escape option over here and click yes option here. And with this, your installation is successfully completed. That means now we have completed a grid infrastructure configuration on both the nodes. So we can verify it also by running the uh, ps a grab commands uh, to verify the details like pmon status and other things. So ASM1 is up and running, even though we can verify the d.bean services. Okay, sorry, just a mistake. Uh, d.bean, okay, after that, we can run the crsctl command, crsctl stat resource hyphen t. So it will provide the complete detail about both the node services. You can see the uh, rack one, rack two, these services are up and running. Okay, so <clears throat> even though you can verify the second node also, what is the current stat? Okay, so we can run ES and near grep. Demon. So that means uh, we can say that our uh, grid infrastructure configuration is successfully done. Now we run the OLS nodes hyphen S. Sorry, it should be OLS nodes. You can see that two node rack one and rack two are currently active. That means our installation is successfully done. Now we can proceed with the RDBMS software installation uh, from the node one, okay, on top of currently. So I'll take the ac access of uh, Oracle user from here for the first node. And uh, <clears throat> this will be Oracle user. So I'll use Oracle here. And sorry, I need to provide the password also. Clear the screen. And I'll go to Oracle home directory, dollar underscore Oracle underscore home. So from here, we have the run installer. Okay. We can remove this software, which we have already unzipped. So that is not required now. So we'll clear this one, run the run installer, and it will start the RDBMS software installer uh, graphical interface. Okay. So now we have the interface for the um, Rack software, uh, RDBMS software installation. And you can see that note uh, for Rack installation for setup only software we have to select. So I'll go with this. And later I'll use the DBCA for database configuration. Uh, so uh, uh, now I'll proceed further from here. So at this junction, we already have the grid infrastructure is uh, up and running. On top of that, we are installing the RDBMS software. Here we have to select the Oracle Real Application Cluster Database installation and then click next. So these are the two nodes on which the software is getting installed. So click on the next here. So rack one, rack two, node one, node names are there. So once it will verify the setup installer validation, uh, then uh, the no installation tab will come. That is, uh, you have to select uh, installation option there. So here we have to select the enterprise edition and uh, click on the next. So this is the base location or this is the software location. From here we'll uh, move further. So once you select the software location, the next part that we need to select is the uh, group look group details. So by default, I'll select all the O install group. Uh, you can segregate the groups based upon your requirements. 
so click on the install groups click on the next so here again the uh, root script i can basically uh, automatically execute by providing the password or you can manually execute once a prompt will come so after this it will go with the prerequisite checks and then then the summary page will appear and we can click on install product and it will begin the installation so now once the prerequisites are done then you can basically ignore these parts as, uh, because of dns these are coming and uh, click on the install option here and it will the uh, installation of rdbms software will begin and uh, you can just uh, i mean uh, even though you can look for the logs also from the installation location where you have executed these commands okay you can open these logs in the, some other uh, i mean window so run the tell command so in the back end you can see a lot of changes are happening so mostly the relinking of uh, uh, these commands is happening so after this uh, installation basically it will copy in the back end on the second node or the remote locations remote server also it will copy the software and it will do the uh, all the changes okay so i hope you are understanding how to perform the rack uh, configuration uh, two node rack configuration which is a 21c database software uh, it is almost uh, similar to 19c configuration that we have previously seen if you haven't gone through all those videos please go through and i hope you are understanding uh, uh, today's session if you have any queries so far you can mention me in the comment and definitely try to help okay so after the completion of uh, this software installation of rdbms we can directly go ahead with the dbca and uh, create the database So with this our rdbms installation is completed we can close this window so we'll close this window the next part is we have to create the database using dbc option now we are using the dbca for database creation so here we have to select the create database option okay and after this we have to go with advanced option and uh, provide all the details which is required now you can see uh, after selection of uh, all the details we can see the database creation is in progress and uh, we have basically uh, and we can monitor the dbc logs from on this location so once the database uh, creation completes i'll show you the final screen so using the dbc we are creating a rag db uh, database which will be like rag db1 and rag db2 instances okay this will take a few minutes of time so meanwhile we'll take the pause here once uh, it is completed i'll show you final screen i hope you have understood uh, whatever we have discussed so far like from the beginning of this chapter if you have any query so far you can send me details on the mail i'll definitely try to help okay so <clears throat> uh, this is going to take a bit of time you can basically monitor the alert log also So guys now we can see that uh, database creation has been completed successfully you can see the finish message over here that means our uh, database creation is successfully uh, completed with this option and now i'll close this window and we can verify the database status on both the nodes so currently you can see this is my first node rack one here the rack db1 is up and running and similarly uh, second node rack db2 is up and running on the node 2 okay so now we can uh, do verify the status of uh, database 
Now I'll copy the uh, SRV CTL command and we'll try to verify the status of the database. Okay, so I'll go back to my command from from here. I'll try to execute the query. Okay. This you can see that database is up and running from the twenty one C home. I will log in into the database. We'll try to look for the database status also. So you can see that is the or twenty one C database up and running. Okay. Now I'll uh, run the DB command to verify the status. So you can see that this is rack DB one. This is rack DB two. Okay, and uh, this is read-write mode up and running. And you can see this is twenty-one uh, database. So with this, we have completed our today agenda of uh, rack database configuration on um, uh, Oracle Linux eight point four. I hope you have enjoyed the entire video tutorial. So I'll request all the new friends to please subscribe my YouTube channel if you haven't done yet. Okay, and uh, in upcoming days uh, we will be uh, looking at uh, many such interesting topics like uh, how to upgrade any database from twelve uh, C or nineteen C to twenty one C. So keep watching, keep learning, and uh, please subscribe and share. Uh, have a great day. Thank you.